everybody, uh, this is Drew with MicaSense. I'm gonna spend the next few minutes just going over a data set that I collected over a seed corn field earlier this summer. So um, just to give you some background, seed corn is a little different than field corn. Um, it's it's planted and produced basically to produce to to produce seed in order to plant field corn for the following year. Um, the there's another difference is that you're you're differentiating between the male and female um, corn plants, and uh, and so you plant the male and female. You plant like four female rows, one male row, four female rows, one male row, etc. Um, you cut off the tassels of the female rows, the male rows. Um, pollinate the female rows and then you cut out the male rows. So there's a lot of like tassel cutting off that happens and that's why um, what you see in the pictures is a lot shorter than what you typically see in a field corn. Um, but that's just some background on it. Um, so you can see um, some skeptical farmers sitting there on the back of uh, my car waiting for the drone flight to happen. Um, but what we're, what we're looking for in particular in this instance is a weed um, weed presence, a particular weed called burr cucumber. Um, so I pulled this information on burr cucumber from the University of Illinois website. I had never actually heard of this plant before, even though I've probably come across it. Um, so it's, it's a summer annual weed species typically found near creeks and rivers, um, but it, it's extended its range to include uplands and farm fields. And the reason it's troublesome in corn and in soybeans is, is it's a discontinuous emergence pattern um, with plants emerging late into the growing season when there are a few effective herbicide options. It's a very competitive weed. So um, once it gets started, it can uh, really stunt the yield of corn and soybeans. University of Illinois listed that it drops soybean yield by 43% on average. Um, and, then, and then thirdly, just kind of from a practical standpoint, it's vining growth interferes with harvest. So if you ran into a patch of this with a combine, you'd probably have to back out of it and, um, and run the combine in reverse or, or um, the combine head in reverse or get out and actually shut the head off and, and clear out the combine head. So, it's a pretty nasty weed, um, and uh, it's actually the same, it's in the same family as the cultivated cucumber we grow in our garden. Um, so that's kind of a fun fact, but it's it's typically emerging in May and June, um, and then it continues to emerge throughout the fall. So that's what we were looking for when we did this flight. Um, so let me jump over to the, the data set in QGIS. So what I did here, let me just back up a little bit and look at some different layers here. So look at the RGB first. So this is a this is the RGB composite um, from the red edge. So the, I flew the red edge if I hadn't said that already. And um, looking at the RGB composite, you can see some washout going on. That probably happened in the spring. When the seed, when the plants were small, probably a lot of rain wa caused some washout. Um, so maybe there's uh, some insight into putting in some tile potentially. Um, you you can, if we're looking for weeds, you actually can see a different color green hue. And in this area, um, some of the other areas of the field, you can spot it if you look closely. Um, but what I did was I created a, a custom composite with uh, the the near infrared band, the red edge band, and the red band from the red edge camera. And using those three spectral bands as a custom composite, um, I was able to make the the species, um, the plant species, corn versus weeds stand out a bit a bit better. So um, when we look at that composite versus the RGB, so I'll switch back to the RGB and then go to the composite. You can see the weed patches popping up a bit more clearly, um, like down in the, the right-hand corner, you see weeds. Um, you see some weeds kind of growing in a diagonal pattern through this washout area, um, and then pretty heavy in this, in this center area. Um, and then unfortunately, 
I wasn't really certain about the size of the field and I ended up only flying like half of it. But um, what I thought was actually most intriguing was this little snippet up here that I just barely captured um, in this data set. And that sure looks a lot like some sort of viney weed that's taking over the corn. Um, and then if you look at the RGB composite, it does, you know, it, it's pretty thick. So that's either a button weed maybe, or, or it is the burr cucumber. Um, but you can see how you can look at the RGB composite, you can look at the, the custom composite. In my opinion, the custom composite made it pop a bit more. Um, and then uh, you know, we can also look at the near infrared or uh, the NDRE layer. I put an NDRE index together just to look at the variability across the field as well. So I really just used um, the NDRE index, the custom composite, 543. Five, near infrared, red edge and red, and then just the RGB composite to do a general analysis of this field. Um, but once I, once I went through that, um, I, I, I kind of marked up this map and created a PDF export to email to the farmer. And that looks like this. So it's pretty simplistic. I just wrote in the soybean patch here because we didn't care about soybeans. I just wrote a little blurb on what um, what he's looking at, and I just circled other areas where I thought there was weed pressure because that's what he was interested in. Um, and then I, in particular, um, circled this one and pointed an arrow, arrow to it. And, and um, in the email I sent, I said that might be the burr cucumber you're looking for. Um, but yeah, that's that's a quick summary of of um, this data set of of seed corn. Hope you enjoyed it.